on in. Nice to see you. Glad you could check out this video right now. Come on in. Have a seat. Whether you're, um, I was going to say driving, but probably not a good idea. Maybe you're working out. Maybe you're on a walk. Maybe you're cleaning the house. Maybe you're feeding your baby. Whatever the case is, I'm happy that you're here. So come on in. Have a seat. We're going to talk about a case that you guys have asked a lot about. Even during my old channel when I was on YouTube before, I got a lot of questions. But I never talked about the case. I'm not sure why I didn't talk about it, but... We're going to talk about it today. Um, also, before we get started, if you like vintage, fine costume jewelry designer, have a look at my website. This is all vintage costume jewelry, but it's not just costume jewelry. It's designer, fine costume. This is Trafari. Uh, the ring is Heidi Doss. And I didn't check and see even what this is, but I know I got this at a, um, what's that called? Um, estate sale. <laughs> I got this at an estate sale. Oh my God, my brain, you guys, my brain. Ever since COVID, I don't know. Again, maybe it's my age, I don't know. But something's not right and something, it, I don't think it's gonna go back. I think this is just who I am now, which well, kind of scary. But yeah, check out my website. It's a little pricey, but it's good value for what you're getting. Again, vintage designer fine costume jewelry. Check it out. Just it's fun to go on the website and, and look and just window shop if nothing else. So please head over and do that. I appreciate it so much. And before we get started with the content on this case, please go ahead and like the video. When you like a video, it helps the algorithms on YouTube to put out that video to other people and make it as a suggestion for them to watch. Subscribe. The subscribers have slowed down. We need to get to a thousand. I think I'm at 733. What the heck? But thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. And then just share the video. You never know who's going to go, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Maybe they want to get into true crime or maybe they have uh, curiosities about spirit and what happens on the other side and all that stuff that I talk about so passionately. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to do here. Okay, let me open my soda. Well, it's not soda. Don't drink. Don't drink soda. Even diet soda. Don't drink soda. It's bad. It's very bad for you. Even diet soda will make you fat. It's true. It's true. Anyway, I'm not here to lecture you today. Okay. So I decided I will go ahead and talk about this case of Maddie McCann. I'm going to get into who she was, what happened, and all of that. But I need to be 100% crystal clear with you so that you know where I'm coming from, how much do I know right now, what has Spirit shown me so far. I'm going to tell you what I... Um, if I've looked at any videos or read any information or whatever, because I'm going to go through and read this paper. It's 12 pages. I'm not going to read the whole thing, probably. And this is just part of the report online on Wikipedia. So I haven't read it. OK, I have not read this. So I'm hiding behind the paper so I can burp. I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't read this, but I just went in and printed part of the article out because I'm going to tell you what I first know and I'm going to react to the information that's on in this, this article here. So it's a very lengthy article. So hang with me. Um, you guys probably already know everything in here, but what I'm hoping is going to happen, here's what I want to happen. I would love for spirit to come in as I'm reading this information and talk to me and respond to what I'm reading. So whether it's Maddie that comes in, I'm sorry to say I she's passed. 
That much I, I know. How do I know that? Because I'm a psychic. And I feel it. I see it. And right now I'm getting information. Haven't had this come in before. Okay. Sorry, I'm interrupting myself, I know. But hold on. <laughs> um, okay. I'm being shown and told... Matt, yes, Maddie's passed, but she didn't pass right away is what Spirit's saying. Spirit's saying she was alive for a little bit after, after she was taken. Um, I'm waiting for some more information. It's like they're saying, well, she wasn't killed that night and then buried. She was removed and then killed. What the hell? What is wrong with people? Oh, I can't get into that. Oh, God, that just makes me sick to my stomach. Okay, so let me tell you what I have done. What do I know so far? What have I researched? What have I watched? Hardly anything at all. Okay, I'm not even sure when this happened, but I'm going to read it shortly. Uh, years ago, when I was doing the Watts case... Um, was I doing the Watts case? It might have been after that. But, okay, no, I'm correcting myself. I don't know when it was that I watched this video, but it was a video from those YouTubers. Um, I forgot their names. The behavioral panel, behavior panel, maybe, those four guys. They were doing um, analysis on some video footage of the mom and dad. <clears throat> excuse me, and they were analyzing mom and dad's behavior. And I don't even remember what the behavior panel, what their findings were, what their opinions are on the mom and dad. I don't even remember that because I don't know why. <laughs> I just don't remember it. But that's all I've watched. So I watched a, a analysis video from the YouTube channel called Behavioral Panel with those four guys on the McCann case. Again, I don't even remember what they were talking about with the case. They don't really talk about the case. They're only talking about like the behaviors they're seeing, the movements and all that stuff. So um, now let me tell you what my first thought was, and again, I don't remember what they said, if, if mom or dad are involved in any way. Here's what I know from spirit on this case. Spirit shows me very, very clearly, Mr. McCann, dad, I don't know his name. Um, he's hiding something. Does it mean he's guilty? Does it mean he killed Maddie? Does it mean he, he sold Maddie or disposed of her somehow in some way? No. He's not, according to spirit. What he is guilty of, the father, is trying to protect himself over something that might cause people to say or think, hmm, now I'm suspicious of the father. Based on what he just said or what he admitted to, now I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious of the, of the father and his involvement because what he just said, uh, um, not cool. And I don't think it's even anything illegal. I think it was him, his parenting style, something to do with how he raised his, his kids and how he would reprimand his children, that sort of thing. And... <laughs> And the father has told the mother, do not tell anyone about that. 
situation, whatever it is he did, whatever it was he said, I feel like he maybe spanked Maddie. I feel like maybe he overly spanked her. There, I feel like there was physical evidence of the spanking. Um, is that against the law? What I am saying, well, I don't know. I mean, if you're my age or older, uh, well, I even used to spank my son, my middle child. Um, but um, do you see what I'm saying? It's a very judgy subject. So just because someone spanks the kid doesn't mean that they're uh, an abuser. It doesn't necessarily mean they're uh, a pedophile or a murderer. So I can understand if that's the case. And that is what Spirit's showing me. That dad did something. He basically threatened the wife, his wife. Like, if you say anything... Like, I'm going to freaking kill you. <laughs> but not like he would kill her. But that's like the feeling he gave the wife of no option. You cannot say anything about this. Um, because what I noticed, what Spirit showed me with the mom in that video that these guys were in, um, analyzing is mom is strictly under dad's control. That's, this feels like an abusive relationship, this marriage, for sure. Uh, mom waits for dad to talk, watches what she's saying very carefully. She looks at dad to see if it's okay to talk. Mom was scared in this interview. I, I could feel it with 100% certainty that the mom was scared to say something wrong. Um... And that's all I have on that. But I'm hoping as what happens when I'm with you guys, uh, I'm hoping that when I start reading this article, stuff's going to start popping up in, in, you know, psychically with me. So visions are a big thing that happens with me when I start reading something or talking about something. If I'm sitting here talking about somebody who's passed, they may come into my presence, that sort of thing. So I just, since we can't go live right now, I just want to, I want you to have the thrill of a lifetime. <laughs> I want you to sit with me, just the two of us. And we'll go over this and uh, you can see my reaction firsthand. This is it. I'm not going to edit this. You know, it is what it is. So, again, this is a week Wikipedia disappearance of Madeline Can McCann. Sorry. All right. So. All right. I see a artist rendering of what she might look like. In 2012. Oh, so this must be, she must be gone a long time ago. All right, so I'm just going to start reading. Madeline Beth McCann, born 12, 12th of May 2003, is a British missing person who disappeared from her bed in a holiday apartment in Praia de Luz, Portugal, on the evening of. Oh, so right around her birthday. Right um, on the evening of May 3rd, 2007, at the age of three. Wow, she was only three? I thought she was, I thought she, I feel like she was older than three. I'm feeling five. Not much difference. Okay, keep going. The Daily Telegraph described the disappearance as, quote, the most heavily reported missing person case in modern history, end quote. Madeline's whereabouts remain unknown, although German prosecutors believe she is dead. Okay, I'm confused. How did Germany get involved in this? Portugal is not near Germany. Okay, I don't know. Madeline was on holiday from the United Kingdom with her parents, Kate and Gary or Jerry McCann, her two-year-old twin siblings, 
and a group of family and their friends' children. The McCann children had been left asleep at 20, so 8.30 at night, 20.30, 8.30, in the ground floor apartment while their parents dined with friends in a restaurant 55 meters, which is 180 feet away. All right, 180 feet, that's not, that's not far. So, okay, let me keep going. The parents checked on the children throughout the evening until Kate discovered Mad Madeline was missing at 2200 hours. So that's at 10 p.m. So if they were in bed, the kids were asleep, 8.30. Yeah, that makes sense that the kids of that age would be in bed at 8.30. I, I know as a parent, that would be my goal to have my little ones in bed by that time, if not earlier even. Over the following weeks, particularly after misinterpreting a British DNA analysis, the Portuguese police came to believe that Madeline had died in an accident in the apartment and that her parents had covered it up. Why? The McCanns were given suspect status in September 2007. Okay, so this happened in May of 2007. So they were given suspect status in 2007, which was lifted when Portugal Attorney General archived the case in July 2008 for lack of evidence. Okay, well, I'd like to know why the parents were status under suspicion. And I think that's where the dad comes in. It's, the, it's something to do with the father. Madeline's parents continued the investigation using private detectives until Scotland Yard opened its own inquiry. Operation Grange in 2011, the senior investigating officer announced that he was treating the disappearance as a, quote, criminal act by a stranger, unquote, end quote, sorry, um, most likely a planned abduction or burglary gone wrong. In 2013, Scotland Yard released effort images of men they wanted to trace, including one of the one of a man seen carrying a child toward the beach on the night Madeline vanished. Shortly after this, Portuguese police reopened their inquiry. Operation Grange was scaled back in 2015, but the remaining detectives continued a per to pursue a small number of inquiries described in April 2017 as significant. In 2020, police in the German city of Brushingwig, Braun, mm -hmm, Brushingwig, stated there was a new subject, new suspect. There was a new suspect in Madeline's disappearance, whom public prosecutor Hans Christian Wolters was convinced had abducted and murdered the child. Okay, so this German guy was in Portugal and okay, I get I All right, let's keep going. Madeline's disappearance attracted sustained international interest and saturation coverage in the UK, reminiscent of the death of Princess Diana in 1997. Wow, it was that big of a deal? I mean, of course, it's not what I mean. Of course, it's a big deal. But to compare it to Diana's death, that's interesting. Her parents were subjected to intense scrutiny and baseless allegations of involvement in their daughter's death, particularly in the tabloid press and on Twitter. 
In 2008, they and their traveling companions received damages and apologies from Express Newspapers. And in 2011, the McCanns testified before the Levinson Inquiry into British Press Misconduct, lending support to those arguing for tighter press regulations. I don't care, I don't care about the press. Give me more info on what the hell happened. <clears throat> Madeline McCann was born in Leicester and lived with her family in Rothley, Leicestershire. At her parents' request, she was made a ward of the court in England shortly after the disappearance, which gave the court statutory powers to act on her behalf. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, it's good in one way, but basically they took the child away from the parents legally so that they could proceed with the investigation as they felt fit. But still, that's an awful feeling. Wouldn't it be awful, an awful feeling? Not only is your child missing and probably not with us any longer, the government has taken possession over the rights of this child? Hmm. Huh. I don't like that. Police described Madeline as blonde-haired with blue-green eyes, a small brown spot on her left calf, and a distinctive dark strip on the iris of her right eye. That's that picture I showed you before. If I still have it, I'll put it right here. Um, yeah, her eye has that little weird thing kind of dropping down from her iris. <clears throat> in 2009, the McCanns released age-progressed images of how she may have looked at age six. And in 2012, Scotland Yard commissioned one of her at age nine. Okay. Kate and Gary McCann, if it's Gary or Jerry, I don't know. Madeline's parents are both physicians and practicing Roman Catholics. Kate Marie McCann Nee Healy, born 1968, Houghton, near Liverpool, attended All Saints School in Anfield, then Notre Dame High School in Everton Valley, graduating in 1992 with a degree in medicine from the University of Dundee, she moved briefly into obstetrics, obstetrics and gynecology, then anesthetics, and finally general practice. Gerald, so it's probably Jerry, huh? If his name's Gerald. Gerald Patrick McCann, born 1968 in Glasgow, attended Holly Rock, Holly Rood, Holly Rood RC Secondary School before graduating from the University of Glasgow with his BS in psychology, sports science in 1989. In 1992, he qualified in medicine and in 2002 obtained his MD also from Glasgow since, since 2005. He has been a consultant cardiologist in Glenfield Hospital, Luster. The McCanns met in 1993 in Glasgow and were married in 1998. Madeline was born in 2003 and the twins, a boy and girl, in 2005. What's tapas? Okay. Is that a restaurant or something? Tapas. Tapas 7. The McCanns were on holiday with seven friends and eight children in all, including the McCanns three. The nine adults dined together most evenings at 10 at 8.30. Is that 8.30? 12, 8, yeah. 8.30 in the resort's tapas restaurant, as a result of which the media dubbed the friends the Tapas Seven. The Tapas Seven included Fiona and David Payne, both physicians, 
their two children and Fiona's mother, Diane Webster. The McCanns had known the Paines for years. Kate had met Fiona in 2000 when they both worked in Leicester General Hospital Intensive Care Unit. Accompanying them were two couples the Paines had originally introduced to the McCanns. Oh, some of it's cut off right here. I'm going to show you it's kind of cut off right here, so I'm not sure what that's going to say on that side. Okay. Uh, Paines had originally introduced to the McCanns Jane Tanner, um, something manager, and her partner, partner Russell O'Brien, a physician who were on holiday with their two children and something Oldfield, another physician who was with his wife, Rachel Oldfield, a lawyer, and their daughter, Jerry Russell so-and-so, Matthew, had worked together over the years. The Tanner, quote, Tanner sighting, unquote, Jane Tanner's report that she saw, this picture is right in the way, she saw X, Y, and Z carry a child away from the resort 45 minutes before Madeline was reported missing. Became one of the most something aspects of the case. Why is this isn't, I can't even, this is like the most important part of the whole thing right now is this. Who saw, wait, she saw who carrying the child away? Who did she see carrying the child away 45 minutes earlier? And who is it that became? Oh, shit, I didn't notice that. It's cutting off. Why is that cutting off? Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to skip a couple areas. Tanner. Okay, all right, I'm going to skip a little bit and come down to 8.30 at the Tapas Restaurant. At 8.30, the parents left to dine with their friends in the Oceans Club Open Air Tapas Restaurant, located on the other side of the pool. lay about 50 meter, 55 meters or 180 feet from the restaurant as a crow flies. So the, where the kids were, it was about 180 feet from this location. But getting to the restaurant involved walking along a public street to reach the doors of the Ocean Club Resort then walking through the resort to the other side of the pool. 180 feet isn't that much. Well, let's see, that'd be about 18 stories. That's not a, that's not a huge distance. The top of the apartment was visible from the tapas restaurant, but not the doors. The patio doors could be locked only from the inside, so the McCanns left them closed but unlocked with the curtains drawn so they could let themselves in that way when checking on the children. There was a child safety gate at the top of the steps from the patio and a low gate at the bottom, which led to the street. <clears throat> so... I'm a helicopter parent. I've always been a helicopter parent. I just hover over my kids. I'm watching. I'm waiting. I'm checking. Um, and I'm not saying it's it's a good thing. That, that's just how I am. I've always been overprotective of my kids. And I do remember when I heard about this case, I think what what I heard about it was, oh, parents were at a restaurant. They left the kids behind and, and one was taken. Well, why weren't the other ones taken? 
if this was, and, and I haven't read this anywhere or anything, but if this was like a sex trafficking or child trafficking or something, why would they just take Maddie? Um, even if I would feel uncomfortable, well, I mean, I've been a mother for 30 years at this point. I would feel comfortable <clears throat> having a dinner party. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if I could even say that. I don't know if I would even feel safe having my kids at my own house and not having my eyes on them if I had people at my house for a dinner party. I'm so suspicious all the time. I'm paranoid. But even any... You can't, you can't assume your kids are safe if you can't see them. But I think normal people, unlike myself, being abnormal, I could... Ooh, I think I just saw a thingy, an orb. Um, I think normal people would be okay saying, Audrey, you're overreacting. I'm totally fine with having my kids gone to bed in their bedroom if I have friends over for dinner. What is your problem, Audrey? <laughs> I'm paranoid. I'm, par I'm overprotective. So I don't know how I feel about the parents leaving the kids 180 feet away. I could see normal people doing that, I think. I would never do that. I would never do that. I mean, especially, okay, well, one, you're in a foreign country. Two, the doors are unlocked. And three, you got to, there's a pool? What if the kids go down to the pool and drown? <sighs> oh, my God. I, well, this video is not about my judgment on these people. My, this video is about my reactions, I guess. But I'm hoping spirit will come in, whether it be Maddie or, I don't know, somebody else. Anyone can come in. Anyone, well, not anyone can come in. Anyone to do with the case, you can come in to my presence. All right. The resort's staff, so the staff at the resort, had left a note in a message book at the swimming pool reception area asking that the same table which overlooked the apartments be book, block booked for 8.30 for the McCann's and friends every evening for the last four evenings of the holiday. The message said, the group's children were asleep in the apartment. <sighs> Why would you put that? Kate believes the abductor may have seen the note. The McCanns and their friends left their restaurant roughly every half hour to check on the children. Jerry carried out the first check around 21.05. So that's what, 9.05 p.m. So the dad checked on them allegedly at 9.05-ish. The children were asleep and all was well, except that he recalled having left the children's bedroom door slightly ajar. And now it stood almost wide open. <sighs> he pulled it nearly closed again before returning to the restaurant. Okay, why would you do that? Why would you leave the door ajar a little bit? To hear them? That's sketchy. Is that the information that I'm seeing that the dad did that he didn't want anyone to find out about? I don't feel like that's it. I mean, that's sketchy. 
Why would you leave the door? I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. I think if anything, if I was going to, which I never would leave my kids alone like that, but if I was, and, and I was in this scene here, I would have locked the doors um, and went and got like a spare key or another card or something so that I could let myself in. But I would definitely have locked the door. Now we got Jerry here leaving the door ajar. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Information's coming in. I am seeing that the dad, Mr. McCann, has had some problems, some issues, mental health issues, we'll call it. Okay, so what does that have to do with him leaving the door ajar? Was he drink? Did he drink that night? Did he have alcohol? Was he buzzed or drunk by this point? Did he have trouble processing information and was confused about something? And maybe to himself, it seemed logical to leave the door ajar. Don't know. All right, let's go to the next paragraph. Okay, so now we're at 21 hours, 15 minutes. So that's 9.15 p.m. The sighting by Jane Tanner, one of the Tapas Seven, of a man carrying a child that, that night became an important part of the early investigation. Tanner, Jane Tanner, had left the restaurant just after 2100 hours, that's nine o'clock, to check on her own daughter, passing Jerry on Rua D Rua Drive, Francisco Gentil Martins, on the way back to the restaurant from his 905 check-in of the kids. He had stopped to chat to a British holiday maker, but neither man recalled having seen Tanner. This puzzled the Portuguese police. Uh, this puzzled the Portuguese police given how narrow the street was and led them to accuse Tanner of having invented the sighting. Okay, so if she invented this sighting of a man carrying a child, that would have been basically getting the parents off the hook, kind of like an alibi, I guess, in a way. Tanner told the police that around 2100 hours 15, she had noticed a man carrying a young child walk across the junction of Rua Drive Francisco and Rua Drive Agost Agostino da Silva just ahead of her. He was not far from Madeline's bedroom heading east, away from the front of apartment 5A. In the early days of the investigation, the direction in which he was, okay, sorry, I'm distracted. I'm having someone come in and they need to leave. Whoever this is, I don't like your energy. You need to leave right now. You are not welcome here with me. You need to leave my premises, my property. Leave. You're not welcome. Whoever you are, I'm going to ask all spirits to leave, actually. I want every single spirit out of my house, except any guardian angels. I'm going to have to cleanse my, my house. Okay, 
I don't want to keep talking right now because I don't know who the heck this is, but it's um, very evil. Now someone's trying to come in. I just said for everyone to leave. Who is trying to come in? I hate, I hate that spirit. Okay. I have the chills. I want all spirits to leave my house, leave my premises, leave my property now, unless you are a guardian angel or my spirit guide. Is that an airplane? It's low. Why is that airplane so low? Okay, just give me a minute. I don't know what it is about that. All right, I'm going to stop it there for today. Um, Please put your comments and stuff down below. Sorry, I keep moving the camera. Um, put your comments down below or questions. Um, if you can comment on any of this stuff that I've read so far. Um, why was there a negative energy when I started talking about this pathway where... Jane Tanner would have seen the man carrying a child where uh, Mr. McCann was talking to a fellow British person um, outside. I'm not sure what that means, but negative energies are very strong. They always are. Um, okay. Okay. Why? They're still, they're still trying to come in. Okay, my first thought is, uh, the person who did this is dead. I'm home alone. I'm home alone. <laughs> Spirits can hear, they can read my mind, they know what I'm thinking or saying. Okay. All right. So we'll continue this in another video. So to recap everything, my first response to this is, I would say, um, there's more than one thing that is suspect. There's more than one person not being 100% honest. There is someone withholding information, and that is... It, certainly the father, Mr. McCann, and he's he's forcing the mom to keep her mouth shut, um, which honestly is a, a disservice because that's going to, that changes the direction of the investigation, right? I mean, the more information, information turns your path. So until dad gets honest with, with everything, um, yeah, it's going to be hard to find the, the actual guilty party but um i'll continue reading from this later and um yeah let me know your thoughts and comments questions responses all that jazz so thanks for watching this video remember please like this video subscribe to the channel and share with a friend family member or stranger i don't care throw me out there just do it. All right, you guys. I'll see you soon. Take care. I'm going to sage. I'm going to sage. I'm going to go get my sage and sage my house. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye.